Ron, it's so great to meet you and have you here today. I'm so excited to learn more about Monday campaigns. I found out about your organization a couple of years back at the plant-based world in New York. And I was just fascinated because the whole trick about life is planting that seed, putting that toe in the water. And what do I have? What, what makes me excited about it? So please, can you provide some background and how you came into the current role where you are and what you're doing? Sure. Uh, so I came to the Monday campaigns after many years working in publishing and media, the advertising agency world. Um, and then um, I guess within the last 10, 12 years, um, more specifically in working with um, nonprofit and more cause oriented marketing um, and program development. So um, originally I was working with publishing companies and agencies um, like uh, Simon & Schuster Viacom um, was one of my first roles here in New York. Uh, and then I started to transition into more um, digital media. Um, but then I started to see you know, opportunities to work with things that were more educationally focused um, and programmatically focused in terms of teaching people about new things. Um, uh, and had a job at NYU for a few years working with their executive education. Um, and then prior to uh, the Monday campaigns was working uh, to market uh, international exchange programs. So my, my experience sort of run the gam runs the gamut, but a lot of the focus has been on marketing, consumer engagement, and then also um, programmatic work as far as teaching people about ways to do things and the different types of resources that they can be more successful with whatever their effort happens to be. Um, so in working with the Monday campaigns for the last five plus years now, um, I've, I'm in charge of overseeing the whole team. So I oversee the team that manages Meatless Monday, but also a few of our other health focused initiatives in regard to physical activity, stress management. Um, we also do a couple of programs around tobacco cessation and um, one oriented towards um, self care for people who function as family caregivers. So it's, it's a pretty broad swath. Um, and you know, what's always been useful in this role is that because of my combination of experience, it's, it's a great opportunity to engage people in new behavior because that's sort of what marketing is in general is, you know, here's something new. Um, but in this case, we're teaching people how to be healthier um, versus necessarily selling a product, um, which is one of the exciting aspects of this work. Um, so so yeah, um, I, I really came to it from, you know, a kind of more profit consumer marketing orientation. Um, but now I'm really much deeper in terms of the health orientation um, and also coming at it from uh, the perspective of being more evidence-based because we do work with key ac academic and hospital partners um, over at Johns Hopkins, Columbia, Syracuse universities. Um, most recently, uh, we've, we've been working more closely with NYU Langone Health. So, so working very broadly. Well, I love what you said about changing behavior because that's the bottom line. I always tell people it takes 21 days to make a habit and 30 days to make a lifestyle change. And we really have to, it's not a comfortable place those first 30 days, but if we commit to it, make the intention, you know, really life takes its own course and you feel so much better. And what I love about your Monday campaigns is yes, everybody has this weekend, <laughs> but every Monday through you, you get to start over. Tell us more about, you know, Monday campaign and the content. Sure. Um, so I'm going to share a visual here, um, Bill, and hopefully this comes through correctly. Um, so when it comes to the Monday campaigns, we really come to all of our concepts um, from a scientific evidence base. Uh, as I mentioned, we work with some of those key academic partners at Johns Hopkins, at Columbia, um, our recent hospital partners. And we like to talk about Monday as the day all health breaks loose. Um, you've probably heard that from us before. And this is built on a foundation of research. Um, you know, we've done literature reviews, we've looked at differences across cultures and language uh, to understand that people uh, describe being more likely to engage in a healthy behavior on Monday versus other days of the week. And people who actually you know, report doing a healthy behavior on Monday also describe being more likely to continue that behavior for the rest of the week. 
So what we found is that creates a real opportunity to engage people on Monday, get them started, um, because every there's sort of a universal acceptance as Monday is the start, right? Um, even in different cultures where you've got maybe Sunday is your start or your weekend is on Sunday and Monday, um, there's still an acknowledgement of this kind of Monday idea. Um, and how that weekly queue works is what you had said earlier. Uh, if for some reason you're not consistent with your behavior, you eat poorly, you don't exercise over a weekend, there's always that opportunity to refresh your intention and start up again on Monday. So you're not, you're not looking at yourself as a failure, you're seeing opportunity to improve over time. And that's what we want people to do is not only start on Monday, continue on other days of the week, but then also look to every single following Monday as an opportunity to refresh. And this is one of the ways that we think about um, the Healthy Monday Refresh, right? Um, I'll try to make this big enough for anybody who's viewing this to see. But um, what we like to do is think about, you know, setting those realistic goals that are tangible, easy to do. Nobody wants to be told to lose 30 pounds at, at the start of it, but losing one pound a week might be a realistic way to approach um, weight loss if you're trying to you know, reach a healthier weight. So we want people to set realistic goals. And then the Monday concept really lends itself well to breaking it down into steps. You know, you don't have to do everything at once. You can do something tangible, easy, every single week, and then make progress from there. Um, of course, we like to, for people to write down or at least you know, integrate the idea of a weekly plan so that they're figuring out ways to make progress throughout the week and then from week to week. And there's this idea of peer motivation, doing it with other people. Um, during COVID where we haven't been together, there's still plenty of opportunity in digital platforms where people can say, hey, this is where I am. Um, social media sharing, whether you're on a Zoom meeting together. Um, there are all sorts of ways you can facilitate doing it with other people who are keeping you motivated and challenging you to do better. Um, I think that that's one of the key things here. And then as I mentioned before, you know, if you do relapse, if you don't, if you don't perform well for a particular week, there's always an opportunity to refresh every single Monday. So that's what this button is about. So um, we really have guided all of our practices around these key ideas with the Healthy Monday Refresh. And I just want to show um, kind of the brief overview of our portfolio as far as the different behavior areas and campaigns that we've developed. So Healthy Monday is our overarching um, concept that is informed by all these other different health behavior areas. So we work with nutrition with Meatless Monday. We do have a sort of a segment program called Good Kids Cook Monday, um, which I can touch on a little bit today. Um, we also focus on physical activity, stress management, as I mentioned, tobacco cessation and caregiver support as well. Um, so, so those are some of the key areas where we've really taken this concept and run with it with other different types of behaviors. And we're always looking at ways to validate these concepts by working with key institutions, our academic partners, who actually will study a group of people and then be able to give us uh, feedback and evaluation to tell us, were people more successful as a result of using this kind of weekly cue? So I'm gonna stop sharing here um, and uh, give you some space to ask more questions. I love it all. That was amazing. And every one of them is like we talked about when we first started, you and I, about that whole person. And, and it is about the healthy eating, the healthy exercise, getting rid of the stress. I particularly love about um, caregive support. Can you just share a little bit about what that is? Sure. Now, Caregiver Monday is um, kind of one of our... Um, sort of offshoot programs, we work with a professional in uh, gerontology named Sherry Snelling, whose specialty is in senior care, but um, has also really developed a practice around people who function as family caregivers. And what that program is designed to do is to get people who function as those caregivers to take time to take care of themselves, because in many cases, they're working full-time jobs already, but then they're expected to come home or take breaks in their day to take care of a family member who doesn't have professional care 24 hours a day. And that's a very stressful thing for people. Um, so Sherry really runs 
that program for us, um, for people who want to use the Monday concept as part of a behavior change program to help support those caregivers. Um, and she's really adapted a lot of our content and worked very closely with us um, to support caregivers in things, particularly with stress management. Um, oftentimes they're not getting appropriate physical activity that's just focused on their care. Um, they often don't get a chance to eat well. So um, Sherry's really taken a lot of our concepts and integrated them into a portfolio that lasts 52 weeks long. So, you know, somebody who wants to jump onto that program has something new to, that they can start their week off with every single Monday. You know, that's so dear to my heart. My father lived with me for the last couple of years of his life. And um, that's the number one thing I did to be a better person for him was to take care of myself. And um, I'd have a caregiver so that I could go hiking or play pickleball, you know, go out with my friends. I also worked full time, as you said, um, but these tools and I meditated every day were tools in the toolbox that you're talking about that made it successful. And then of course I was then a better caregiver and on a happier note, you know, to be able to take care and, and enjoy my dad's company. So I, I get that one. Tell us about um, kids cooking. I can't wait. Yeah. Well, kids cook one day is one of our concepts too, that, um, that has a whole portfolio of resources related to cooking as a family. Um, and the majority of the recipes that we offer there are meant to be easy for kids to participate in. So whether it's something simple like safely chopping vegetables, doing some of that prep work that, that's okay for kids of a certain age to do. Um, but then also really integrating uh, good tasting, healthy meals that the family can eat together. So that, that concept is built around the idea of family cooking, um, but really takes a lead from Meatless Monday in that the, the meal preparation is oriented towards meatless meals, more plant forward food. Well, that's also dear to my heart. <laughs> you know, we created the first K through sixth grade whole child curriculum with the first plant-based nutrition to help kids learn what does that mean and bring that back into their homes so that they can have their Monday and start over if they need to or continue, as you say, every day and take it a little bit more. We also have a cookbook called Think Outside the Lunchbox, which is perfect. You know, mm. 250 plant nutritious recipes. So again, if we start with those kids like you're talking about and educate them, they become resilient, empowered and change our planet all mm -hmm. in the same breath. Right. So and it's interesting because we've got examples of um, younger people who are within different school systems that saw the value and continue to see the value of more plant-based diets. And they've actually functions as the advocates in their school. They're the ones who sort of got their parents involved, but also then um, did promotions at their school, some of, in, in many cases using materials from our website to promote the idea of Meatless Monday at their school where they were able to get that integrated as a practice at the school itself. So, you know, oftentimes it's driven by the students. You know, they can be as young as 10, 12, who are, who are really engaged and feel passionate about um, making these types of changes. I think it's fabulous. You gotta start there. I call it the back door and then they educate <laughs> the parent, you know, because it just, it happens, just works yeah. and it's part of their education to do this homework, so to speak. And uh, then they, they learn and, and then they implement into their lifestyle. Yes. Okay, so I, I also love <laughs> your stress reducing. Uh, tell us more about that, because that's sure. so important. Yes, well, um, our stress reduction um, campaign is really built on the foundation of a few um, key principles, um, sort of mindfulness, um, positivity, uh, physical activity as a component of stress management, and breathing, um, which is a really foundational element of stress management. So that, that sort of stretches into our entire portfolio. I mean, we've got hundreds of different practices that people can use to, to reduce stress. And, you know, we, we focus those um, practices in a, a number of different areas. We integrate everything from yoga and Tai Chi to mindfulness, meditation, gratitude. Um, our, our website contains all this information and we have instructive video as well as audio uh, meditations that people can do. Um, 
and we've actually integrated in into a lot of different settings. De-stress Monday during this time of COVID has um, generated so much more interest um, in the last year and a half because people are really stressed out. You know, there was always interest in this topic, but um, I think the sense of isolation, um, different stress issues that have come up during the pandemic have really made people more stressed um, and they need more resources. So we've seen huge growth in terms of interest and um, visits to our website and people downloading material. Um, but we've, we've gotten great adoption of this um, in a number of the different programs that we work with. We, we do everything uh, in terms of employee health and wellness. We have a dedicated program for nurses. Um, and that's actually across Healthy Monday, but stress management is one of the, the key uh, areas that we're focusing on because that is a major issue for nurses and people who are working in clinical settings. Um, so, so that's that's a huge component of our portfolio, which has been integrated into programming that um, you know corporations are doing. Um, we actually work with a lot of city and state agencies and departments of health who have actually used these techniques for some of their employees. So two quick questions. What is your website so people can come find all this fabulous? Oh, of course. It's Monday Campaigns, and that's um, uh, Monday Campaigns with an S, uh, dot O-R-G. Um, and I actually will, will show you the homepage of that really briefly, um, just so anybody who's Perfect. watching Thank today uh, will get a chance to see that as well. Um, but this Love is it. a... This is the key URL, mondaycampaigns.org, and you can access all of the different campaign areas that are specific to different behavior change concepts up here. Um, and every week we update the information. We like to show off our academic and hospital partners here um, and the different work that we collaborate with them on. Um, and then there's an opportunity to access new weekly content every single week. So every single week, if you go to this homepage, you'll be able to get a practice related to something that you're working on. So, you know, we focus on the stress management this week. We're talking about breathing. Um, in Move It Monday, we're talking about different levels of activity depending on what's appropriate for you. So it just runs the gamut, but this, ref this content is refreshed every single week. So. You know, if you're a consumer or if you're somebody who actually runs a program yourself, you can come to the website every week. You can access this material and share it with your with your different audiences. Um, we also have a number of different newsletters where if you'd rather us push this information to you, you can sign up for the Healthy Monday newsletter right through here. And um, we'll deliver this content to you every single week. So that's just awesome. a so, quickie. So share, more, <laughs> share more about Meatless Mondays. I can't wait. Okay, good. Well, um, so Meatless Monday, uh, as you probably know, and, and you even mentioned, is how you found us. Um, it's the oldest program within our portfolio, um, with the exception of Healthy Monday. But Meatless Monday really got huge traction. Um, it's been around since 2003. Uh, and our founder, Sid Lerner, was having conversations with Johns Hopkins Center for a Livable Future, who uh, is still one of our key academic partners. And we're they were trying to figure out ways to um, help people get healthier. And one of the key areas that they focused on is how are people eating? And what he and uh, his partner uh, at Johns Hopkins had discovered, uh, his, his name is Dr. Bob, Bob Lawrence, um, was that if you reduce the amount of meat people eat by about 15%, you can have an impact on their overall health outcomes um, because of the amount of cholesterol, um, sort of trans fats, et cetera, um, that are often in animal protein products. And you know, Sid was a very smart man and he immediately did the math and said 15% is one day a week. Uh, and that's really where the idea of Meatless Mendy came from is, this 15% reduction translates to a one day a week change that can then ultimately have these other impacts. So, so that's kind of the first source. And as I mentioned, we still continue to work with the Center for a Livable Future at Johns Hopkins. They function as our scientific advisors to all of the health 
environment nutrition information that we provide. And uh, all of the creative materials that you see are built on that as a foundation. We make it fun and accessible uh, because you know science can often be hard to parse, but um, that's our job as marketing people. Um, and as, as I mentioned, I and many of on my team are um, come from marketing backgrounds. We really try to make it consumer friendly, easy to understand. And when you're talking about kids, you have to make sure that those messages are appropriate for their reading level too. So how are you adopting this in other countries? So Meatless Monday, um, it's one of those things where it's really become a movement beyond just this kind of one day a week practice, which we of course encourage, we're trying to get people started in that way. But it has turned into a movement in that other countries um, sort of saw this and understood, oh, this, this has an impact for me in my community because they saw the health benefits of reducing meat. But then um, over the years, we've, we've started to make more of that connection between what you eat and how it has an impact on the environment because of the way that um, animals and livestock are actually produced. You know, the water consumption, the land usage, the greenhouse gas emissions that result from the, the different animals. So we've started to make that connection over the last many years um, and educate people about that. So as a result, all these other organizations have seen the value of that and started their own campaigns. So we've got advocates in 40, uh, more than 40 countries. Um, the Meatless Monday concept has been translated into more than 22 languages. Um, we've got we've got advocates in pretty much every continent except for who knows Antarctica. Um, but uh, but other than that, um, you know, we it's really grown quite organically um, because people see the value of it. And of course, we're we're developing dedicated partnership with people with uh, with organizations who already have existing networks in different countries, so that we can really get the distribution of the information. Um, happening through those organizations. So personal question, are you sure. plant nutritious? I am plant nutritious. I'm, I'm plant forward. I'm not, I'm not vegan. Um, I'm mostly vegetarian, um, but um, you know, I'm definitely an advocate of the meatless Monday concept because it is, um, you know, sort of how I eat. Um, you know, I, I will skip meat one day a week, but it often influences my choices throughout the rest of the week too. Now, have you always been this way or since you started with this company five years ago? I think it's definitely um, uh, increased um, since I started working with Meatless Monday because, you know, I, I had an understanding of, of some of the impacts that, that I'm mentioning here today as far as health and, uh, and environment. Um, but when you really dig into it, it's like, wow, you know, that really has a huge impact because I was, I was eating more plant-based even before um, I started working with the, um, the Monday campaigns, but, but even more so now. Um, and it's just so, it, it's easier to be an advocate for something when you're doing it yourself too. Oh, absolutely. With Shape Up, you know, I was, um, I've been plant nutritious for a couple years now. And um, I, I, I had, fish before that but nothing else and um once i get the and i have to go back to the same of your audience the knowledge of you know the the planet and the health of me and other people i took the drastic change which i call at the time but mentally emotionally and physically the benefits are extraordinary yeah they are it really does make a difference. And there's so many other impacts too, like, you know, plant-based foods can often be easier to prepare. Their shelf life can be longer. I mean, there are a lot of different ways of looking at it. Um, and that's one of the things that we try to teach people is there are a lot of angles in to sort of persuade people, well, why would you make this one day a week choice? Um, there are a lot of different ways at it. So tell me how you're getting this more into schools and what, what is that vision and, and focus? Well, I, I think that um, a lot of it has to do with uh, cultivating these advocates that we're talking about. You know, as I mentioned earlier, sometimes it comes from the students themselves. Um, sometimes it comes from a family member or a parent who's really uh, strongly focused on this. Um, it, it may come from a community member who just sort of sees a benefit to the school. Um, so 
it can be driven from a lot of different angles. Um, in, in the case of New York City, we actually had multiple advocates that were working in our favor because we developed relationships with a few different organizations. Um, and then ultimately with um, Eric Adams, who's the borough president of Brooklyn. Um, and he was a really strong advocate. There were some schools there that were um, very much interested in doing something like this um, with their school menus. And it really originated from there and having leadership engaged. Um, Eric Adams, you might know, is personally vegan um, because he had been suffering from diabetes um, uh, and basically had to look at a whole lifestyle change. Um, so he started um, eating more plant-based, um, doing more physical activity. He even speaks um, about uh, stress management as a component of getting him healthier again, where um, his, his diabetes symptoms have actually, um, you know, almost disappeared. So um, it's, it's a big lifestyle change, which he feels a lot stronger about. So as a result, um, we were able to get more traction with the whole New York City school system um, where they've actually made a commitment to continuing to serve plant-based foods in the schools, um, you know, every Monday. I love it. Yep, it certainly rocked his world. Yeah, it did. And, and it, one thing that's always helpful is to have an example like that where you see it's the largest school, public school system in the country. Um, it gets other people excited and engaged and gets them to, to sort of seek out information, which we're always here for, of course, um, and how they can do it easily in their school. Um, we have gotten traction in a lot of other cities and states, um, you know, even beyond the school systems, you know, we're getting proclamations from mayors and um, different community organizations who are making these types of commitments. Right. We have a board member, um, Dr. Chris Lineberry. He's one of our speakers on the summit also. And his story was at 33 years old, he had a heart attack in the classroom. Wow. Exactly. So I tell the audience, let's not go that far. Let, let's talk about the Monday campaigns and, and make your Monday every day, every Monday powerful so that you can re restart your engine. But one thing we didn't discuss, which is also equally as important, because I call it a puzzle, everything that you're talking about and pieces of the puzzle makes that whole person again, is the exercise part of it. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so our Move It Monday concept uh, is really oriented towards just getting people to be a little bit more physically active. Um, in many cases, you know, we're often dealing with populations who are doing nothing um, around their own physical activity. They may be very sedentary or they may be at a very sort of low level of activity. I think the pandemic has had a, a particular effect on that where people are at home more, they're not going out, um, they don't wanna be in crowds. So, so um, we've oriented a lot of our content around this idea of, you know, just get up and do something. Um, but we try to provide some structure around that. So we offer different types of practices you can do, whether it's stretching. Um, one of our big concepts within Move It Monday is the Monday Mile. Um, so uh, we try to tell, encourage tell people- Tell us about Monday Mile, what is it? Sure, uh, the Monday Mile is a concept um, of just walking one mile every Monday, um, just to get yourself moving more. Um, and certainly if you can build upon that, do. Um, but it's, it's a very simple thing. Most people can walk. Um, and we actually have uh, done programs with um, other organizations where people who use wheelchairs or um, walk on um, crutches, or even in some cases um, have artificial um, limbs, they still can do it um, because they have to find the appropriate way to do it uh, for them. But, but you can include a lot of people in that type of activity. Um, so the Monday mile is really oriented towards just getting people to do that physical activity to focus. And it's also good for your mind in that, you know, you're not thinking about your stresses for the day or it's a way to sort of ease some of that just by walking around, taking in some, uh, a different type of environment and focusing more on your, your self-care. Um, what what's your movement? Uh, what, what's my movement in terms of what I do on a regular basis? I do a lot of walking, um, particularly, um, you know, when you're in New York City, you walk a lot. Um, so that's, that's something that's built in, <laughs> that's built in. But I mean, in terms of my physical activity, I do do a lot of things um, in terms of, 
yoga. Um, I do um, various exercises that <laughs> were prescribed to me by my physical therapist, but I really build on that too. Um, for, for just maintaining my physical activity, I do running, um, biking. I'm, 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 I, I tend to do a lot of different activities just to kind of mix it up a little bit. And did you keep that up through COVID? Were you able to get outside and, and do some of those? Some of them. Um, I've actually been uh, pretty consistent in terms of my own behavior. Um, I walk three times a day. I have a dog. Um, so, so having an animal helps both for stress and for physical activity. But I also really try to dedicate some time to doing that too. Um, and I do um, start off my Mondays often with just stretching um, and kind of getting into a different state of mind. But um, also integrating, you know, as I said, like I do do yoga activity as well. Um, and that's, that's good for stress as well as uh, physical well-being. And you made a great point. You have to put yourself in your schedule. You know, I put myself yeah. in the schedule so that it's in my phone and part of my calendar. Are you guys playing any pickleball in New York? Pickleball? I don't even know if I know what pickleball is. So it's kind of like um, tennis on a smaller court, like ping pong with a paddle, but a wheel. Okay. And um, it's just really fun, very social, competitive against yourself. And uh, we were able to do this during COVID and it was great because you're six feet apart or whatever. And mm -hmm. um, it's, it's been excellent. So look into it as another um, <laughs> okay. <good> thought. <laughs> I'll have to look into that as one of my like team building options. Um, that's great. Um, and, and I do tell people, you know, on Mondays to try something new, you know, too. And I'm sure you guys promote that the same as your Monday miles. Phenomenal. I love that. Get yourself moving every Monday, you know, the nutrition, everything you do, but also roll off on this other side of the bed and see what happens on that Monday. You know, that's yeah. different. Yeah. And, and I just think the concept that you've got created is brilliant. Well, thanks. I mean, uh, I will share just a quick screen grab of some of the types of resources that we make available. Um, this is an example of um, family engagement um, to, to sort of show how, you know, if you are in a setting at home, there are things that you can do as a family, right? So the running, the yoga, the walks, um, those are all appropriate activities um, that you can do as, as an adult and then also as a young person um, to sort of adapt certain movements so that they're appropriate for, for that age group. Um, so that's just something that exists on our website there. Again, everything that I'm showing today is accessible through the website. So these weekly activities can be integrated regardless of where you are. Um, during COVID, we, we made a, a, a more specific effort to find and develop content that people could do either on their own or within a sort of family unit, but also things you could do at home um, if you had more limited space. So, you know, we, all th we often think about New Yorkers who are stuck in their apartments all the time. We, you know, we don't have as much green space as you might in another community. So um, just having all those options really did make a difference. You know, another fun exercise of mine, especially um, where there is not that option is a mini trampoline mm, and yeah. you put it in front of the tv uh, you know and you get your 30 minutes whether it's a fun sitcom or a movie i always um play with my mind and i'll say i'm gonna go, i have an exercise room so it works well with me but i'll go in and i'll watch part of a movie and not have time for the whole thing say you cannot watch the end until you're back on the treadmill <laughs> or you're back on the bike or the stairmaster or whatever it is and so it's a mental game to get me back in there because I loved what I was watching. <laughs> yeah, no, it is, it, it is. And it's, it, it's great to sort of integrate different types of activities to, to just keep yourself motivated. Um, so that's one of the things that we're always trying to do is we try to diversify um, the type of content that we offer. So whether it's walking a Monday mile, but it might be something as simple as, you know, uh, using water bottles as weights is one of the things that we, we have some demonstrations yeah. about even if you build it into your gardening routine, um, you know, you're lifting, you're moving, but do it in a safe and sort of more physically oriented way where it becomes kind of more integrated as an exercise. So you can, you can accomplish multiple things at once, even like what you were just saying. I love it. So what have we missed um, covering that you'd like to cover for Monday campaign? Well, I think there are a couple of things that I just want to share. Um, awesome, thank you. 
just as far as resources, because um, we've talked a lot about these things and I didn't want to sort of overtake the screen in every situation, but um, as no, you mentioned, go ahead, the, Ron. The, <laughs> good. Um, for schools, um, we have we have a whole resource center on our website. Um, and for schools and parents who are interested, there's a whole area that you can jump into to learn more about the benefits, the messaging. Um, if you're functioning as an advocate at a school, this is a great page for you to take a look at. Um, the URL is right here. Um, so let me scroll down to that so you can see it. Um, um, so Meatless Monday slash K through 12 schools. Um, but we have research centers for pretty much every category um, for work that we do in hospitals, corporations, community centers. Um, there are a lot of different ways in to advocate for Meatless Monday, but we've designed the website pages so that you have all the resources you need, whether it's recipes, um, ways to communicate, um, examples that you might cite to persuade your school to participate. Um, all of those resources are there on our website. Um, and similarly, as I mentioned here, um, when you're looking at um, our Move at Monday material, all of this is also available on the website. Um, this is, I, I'm, all, I'm particularly proud of this program that we developed with New York City Parks and the Mayor's Office for People with Disabilities because um, physical activity can be integrated into your routine no matter your ability level. You know, you can find different things that work for you. And we worked with um, the Mayor's Office and New York City Parks to make sure that the things that we would recommend are appropriate for people with different abilities. So. Um, I think that's a particularly um, exciting example for us just because it, it, it demonstrates a way to integrate more people and be more inclusive in our approach. Um, and then the one thing I didn't spend as much time on, but we have the De-Stress Monday at School program, which is something that I, I hope a lot of people in your audience are interested in doing. Um, this program was designed in collaboration with um, both a clinical, uh, doctor as well as um, a behavior uh, change specialist at Johns Hopkins. And basically what we did was develop a curriculum for teachers in Baltimore public schools who were working in under-resourced schools. So they were particularly stressed out. Um, and what we did was develop um, a curriculum for them to focus on their own self-care by doing different stress management, management activities every single Monday. And we also adapted the content so that they could also introduce the concepts to their students in a classroom setting. So this whole curriculum is available on our website through the De-Stress Monday at School uh, URL that I'm showing here. And what we found is that the, the teachers who were participating in this program, many of whom had no experience with using stress management techniques, um, I think it was the statistic was something like 85% of them um, tried the, the stress management techniques at least once during the program. So, you know, and then uh, many more, even more consistently than that. So uh, it was a really good pilot. Um, we're actually looking at um, getting more schools involved for the fall school year. Um, we're winding down, but um, you know, we're, we're marketing this more to, to get more schools involved because the teachers who did participate described not only using the practices, but also having um, other positive experiences as far as having the knowledge to do stress management, um, which is always a foundational thing that we're looking for, but also describing other outcomes like um, feeling less stressed at work, um, feeling, uh, getting better sleep, um, so just really key important indicators for a person's overall health. Um, and so I encourage people to really take a look at this closely, um, see how it might adapt for, for their schools. Um, we've been in, in touch with many schools. We've gotten over 100 inquiries on this program over the last several months. Um, so I'm hoping that we'll see even more over the, uh, the coming summer. The neat thing about it too, Ron, is you can take all this information that I love that you're sharing into the home. You know, homeschools, um, families, employees, families, you know, it doesn't have to just be schools so that everybody, all of our audience can take a piece of what they feel comfortable with or how they want to start that Monday or to me, 
the the type A personality, all the above. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <sighs> and and it was interesting with the disability um, movement. I love it because when my dad lived with me, which I had shared. Um, he became wheel bound at the end of it, and I would put his feet on a trampoline and I would jump him 15 <laughs> to 30 minutes a day. Wow. So that he would get that circulation. And oh my gosh, the benefits were incredible. It doesn't just have to be you. So if you live with someone, that's another way to help them mentally, physically, emotionally, and with that movement that you're talking about every Monday. That's right. That's right. And again, all of the practices that I'm sharing, the different recipes, the different resources, they can be used in pretty much any setting. Um, right. You know, we've worked across all of these settings. We've worked with hospitals, as I mentioned, with nurses. We we integrated the Meatless Monday program at, at cafeterias, at hospitals. As I mentioned, New York City um, Health and Hospitals, the public system in New York. Um, has introduced uh, Meatless Monday to their, their um, patient populations a couple of years ago. So, um, and that's an ongoing program that we collaborate with them on. So, uh, you know, it, it kind of works for a lot of different people, a lot of different settings, and, you know, most of it can be adapted depending on where you are or who you're working with. Um, that De-Stress Monday at School program is a perfect example, as you mentioned. It's not just meant to be done in school with teachers. Uh, as a parent, you can take it home. You can you can practice with your kids. Um, so there are a lot of different ways it can be used. I know myself, I, go, I hike, so I go to the top of the mountain and it's funny because we have a silent moment. And it really mm. doesn't have to be long, you know, it's just a minute to three minutes and we sit there and we just quiet and listen to the desert and what's around and what do you hear and what do you see and, and the richness of the colors. And people don't take that time, neither would I, if I didn't have, a Monday mountain, you know, yeah. and get up there every Monday and say, okay, this is quiet time. And, and so it doesn't matter, like you just mentioned, what the practice is or what you feel comfortable doing, just do it. Mm -hmm. Just do yeah. it. And make, make the time for yourself. That's the yeah. one thing that people, it's one of the key hurdles with, with all of the different people that we talk to is, I don't have time. I don't have time. That, 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 that's too much of a commitment. I mean, many of our our meditations, uh, we, we do one minute meditations uh, that we recommend. Um, we have breathing gifts that you can just follow along for one minute and just do a deep breathing exercise. Um, but in addition to that, um, you know, pretty much everything that you, you do can be done if you just take the time. Um, it, it's one of the biggest hurdles just to getting people started is they think there's too much of a time commitment. 10 minutes for yourself, 15 minutes for yourself every Monday, that's not that much time. I, I think people need to sort of recognize the proportion of that. Well, and I'll add to that because um, it's either take the time now for pre prevention or take the time later when unfortunately you're ill and have to. Yeah. And I certainly would choose and share with the audience like you are, take the time now with prevention and keeping yourself healthy in all areas of your life. Yes. So, is there anything else I might have skipped, missed, or you want to share? I, I could be on here with you for hours, Jill. I um, love it. <laughs> it's my passion, your passion. We're good. Yeah, I know, but I, I feel like we've covered a lot of great territory. I, I encourage people to be in touch um, with us. Go to our website. Um, if you, if you need support um, and just want a little bit of guidance on how to use the different Monday concepts, um, send us an inquiry. Um, we have different forms on the website that you can fill out, um, get in touch with our staff, sign up for our newsletters, follow us on social media. We're everywhere, you know, Facebook, Instagram, Pinterest, Twitter. Um, uh, LinkedIn actually is a big one too. Uh, we do generate a lot of interest from uh, people who are health leaders and program leaders through that channel. So we're, we're constantly putting up new information to just get people aware to start their week off healthy. And make it a domino effect and let's share Monday campaigns with the world. Yes, that's where <laughs> we're going. That's where we're going. You know, you we're, are we're, definitely. And we're God on meetings you. with everybody. So God bless you for being on Shape Up Summit and uh, sharing our passion with your passion. And thanks a million for being here. Well, thanks so much for inviting me. Great talking to you.